And tonight, a new lawsuit filed against Florida's foster care system accuses state agencies of fabricating evidence, falsifying records, and secretly collaborating so people connected to the system could take children for themselves, even when the child's biological relatives want custody. Good evening, and thanks for joining us. I'm Wendy Ryan. And I'm Jamison Euler. Welcome to ABC Action News at 6. Only I-Team investigator Katie Legrone is breaking these new accusations and speaking to families behind this lawsuit who say the system is not only broken but corrupt and using its power and influence to break families apart. With a village of family members surrounding them. I'm sorry. It's okay. It's so much. Tanai and Rodney Williams are for the first time publicly sharing what they describe no loving parent should ever have to. They called us abusers and they just took us from us. Detailing first in a lawsuit and now to us why they say the system created to protect families not only failed them, I got you talking, Tom. but distorted the truth to steal their daughter away. I don't know anything about her, what her favorite color is, her favorite show on TV. I don't know anything. The Williams are among four Florida families now suing the governor and leaders of Florida's Department of Children and Families and other state foster care organizations, accusing the organizations of fabricating evidence, hiding and withholding key information, and ignoring state and federal family laws so they could snatch children from their biological families and then adopt them out to system-connected strangers seeking children of their own. It's been four years and three months. For the Williams, it started in 2017 when their then 12 week old daughter showed signs of leg pain. Mom took her to the ER. According to court records, x-rays revealed a fractured femur and other fractures in various stages of healing. Despite the baby's traumatic birth, which included a broken clavicle and bruising documented by her pediatrician, a nurse suspected abuse. Mom and dad were investigated by police. Case closed, no criminal charges, according to the 106-page complaint filed Wednesday in a federal district court in Tallahassee. Still, the suit says DCF removed the baby and her brother from the home. These young parents eventually stripped of their parental rights. It broke us, it changed us. It's just like it's always gonna be a part of us missing until she comes home, honestly. It ruined my life. While the couple denies they abuse their children and are fighting to get their parental rights restored, their relatives say the system also broke them by depriving the family of their rights to take custody of the baby, bypassing state and federal laws that require foster care systems seek out relatives before placing children with non-relative strangers. Ready, brother, and baby. We passed all the home studies. I mean, they dug in our background. I'm talking about, I've been in the military. Background and checks. the background checks that we went through were just as bad. Yet these grandparents say they were ultimately disqualified from adopting their granddaughter. They came up with so many different excuses. I am retired military, worked for the city of New York, college degree. There was nothing wrong with me having my granddaughter. This biological grandmother says at one point caseworkers falsely claimed she abused her own son years earlier and was even listed on the abuse registry as a child abuser. He was 18 years old at the time. All lies, she says. I felt like it was a conspiracy. And part of a bigger intent described in this lawsuit as unlawful internal diversion to let operators of the system essentially have their choice of children placed into the state's custody. Why would they do it? Lee Crutch is the baby's biological great aunt. Because they've been doing it for so long and they never expected to get caught. In the Williams case, their daughter was fostered out to this family. The father, a board member at the time for the same contracted foster agency that fought to terminate the parents' rights. Felt like it was a setup. I can't even describe the pain that we experienced as a, as a family. Judy Miller says it happened to her family too, nearly three years ago. She moved to Florida from Illinois to care for her granddaughter after her daughter and son-in-law's parental rights were terminated. While the parents deny they did anything wrong, Miller says she was one of eight relatives ready, willing, and able to take custody, but rejected. They did two home studies, and they both were approved. According to this lawsuit, Miller's bond with her daughter was too close. So instead of family, her grandbaby was placed with a stranger, 
system connected the complaint states. You can't write off the whole family. Though. Same for this family, you know whose I mean? daughter I won't grow up with her half-sister because DCF, against committee recommendations to keep the baby with family, instead placed her with a non-relative foster system connected. She was a pretty little blonde hair, blue eyed baby. Of course they wanted her. It's happening all over Florida. So this and is much bigger than these four families. It's much bigger. Octavia Brown is part of the team of attorneys behind this complaint. This is alleging kidnapping within the system. What else do you call it? Brown is also an insider, a former attorney for DCF and other groups within Florida's foster care system. If there is someone who is connected to the system and they see a child that they want, they are going to get the child. While she believes the system overall protects children from abuse, she explains how staff who collaborate to deliberately keep a child from being placed with relatives can get away with it. This system is so bogged down when they come in with these false stories or they come in with false, false allegations of caregivers having backgrounds. The judge is not going to say, oh, well, let me look at this home study. Oh, let me let me look at this you know, uh, criminal background check. Young parents and poor families are most vulnerable, she says. Because those families don't have the money to fight the bogus allegations. <laughs> Today, the Williams are parents to a little boy, their older son placed with grandparents. <laughs> While their only daughter remains gone, adopted three years ago by the same board member and his family who first took her in. In an email, the now former board member stated, I would certainly like to speak to you regarding our daughter. I'm sure you've heard several fabulous stories which are not true. He never elaborated. His attorney wouldn't let him telling me custody cases are by law confidential and can't be publicly discussed. In response to this lawsuit, a spokesperson from DCF told us in this email, in part, we work to exhaust all effort to find a relative or non-relative caregiver for children removed from biological parents. Our goal is family preservation whenever possible. But the Williams and the three other Florida families named in this lawsuit say that's not what happened to them. Now they're hoping the justice system can do what they believe the state's child welfare system went out of its way and against the law not to. He's a black child raised in a white household, and she's going to find out that she was stolen, stolen from an excellent family. The system is a lie. That's just what it is. A DCF spokesperson adds Florida is at an 18 year low when it comes to removing children from caregivers and says they have invested millions of dollars over the last three years to keep kids with family. As for this lawsuit, next steps, responses from these state agencies. I'm Katie Legrone reporting.